I have been using my Sony APS-C camera mainly for shooting video for quite some time now. I am still impressed by the outstanding image quality that can be achieved with a camera of the A6000 series. In this video I will show you which lenses I have bought in the course of time. I will also briefly show you the possible alternatives and explain why I have made certain decisions. This video will only be about APS-C lenses, but of course I am aware that some full frame lenses are also excellent for shooting video on a camera of the A6000 series. For current prices and offers for all the lenses discussed here, I have put a few links in the video description. My name is Werner, I live in the Italian Alps and this channel is about filmmaking tutorials and reviews of consumer cameras. If you are interested in these topics, consider subscribing and have fun with this video. Before I come to the individual lenses, I would like to briefly explain what I mainly use my camera for, so that you can better understand certain decisions. For me, filmmaking is a passion and not a profession. Apart from these videos for YouTube, I mainly make travel videos, which means I usually shoot handheld and sometimes with a gimbal. For this reason, image stabilization plays a role for me. You may own a camera with IBIS, in this case image stabilization in the lens may not be so important for you. Of course, it is also possible to shoot handheld without stabilization. However, this requires a lot of practice and a little more time and patience. Since I am not a professional, the price of the lens also plays an important role for me. In this video I would like to give you an overview. If you want to know more details about the individual lenses, then have a look at their respective videos. Now let's have a look at the different lenses. I would like to start with the lens that certainly I use the most. It's the Sony 18-105 f4. If I could buy just one lens for filmmaking, I would probably still choose this lens today. The reason is quite simply that it is a very versatile lens. You have a good zoom range, you can take wide shots for an establishing shot, but with 105 and f4 you can also take very cinematic shots with a shallow depth of field. The bokeh is very pleasant and creamy and the lens has a constant aperture so you don't have to change the exposure settings when zooming. At the same time the lens does not change its length when zooming, so you can also change the focal length on a gimbal without having to rebalance the gimbal. The lens also has image stabilization and is therefore very suitable for shooting video handheld. The lens is relatively big for a camera of the A6000 series, it's not the sharpest lens and the minimum focusing distance is also rather weak. The price of $500 to $600 however is very interesting considering its positive qualities. Before we come to the prime lenses, I would like to briefly show you what alternatives there would be among the zoom lenses. The Sony 16-70 Zeiss. This lens also has a constant aperture of f4 and image stabilization. It's smaller and much lighter and the minimum focusing distance is also better than that of the 18-105. However, the zoom range is smaller which means you can create less shallow depth of field. The lens is also much more expensive than the 18-105. The new Sony 16-55 2.8. This lens has an excellent constant aperture of 2.8. It is very compact for the high aperture but has no image stabilization. It's also very expensive for an APS-C lens. The Sony 10-18 f4. This zoom lens is practically made for shooting video. Its wide angle is very suitable for establishing shots, action, vlogging and so on. It has an image stabilization and is also relatively small and compact. But with f4 at a maximum of 18mm, you're not able to create a shallow depth of field for cinematic shots. Therefore, I decided to choose a prime lens for the wide angle. Before we get to the prime lenses, I would like to briefly talk about the kit lens. In my opinion, it is quite suitable for shooting video. It is extremely compact and lightweight and can therefore also be used well on a very small gimbal. Interestingly, it also has a relatively low minimum focusing distance. Optically, it is of course not perfect, but it comes at a very low price and especially if you shoot with a higher aperture, you will often hardly notice the difference to a better lens. As for prime lenses, I can definitely recommend the Sony 35 1.8. With a focal length of 35 on APS-C, it is very versatile. Close-ups of people turn out very well and without distortion. You can also capture landscapes very well. All my videos for YouTube, that means these talking headshots, were taken with this lens. With a maximum aperture of 1.8, you can create a nice shallow depth of field and get beautiful cinematic shots. The bokeh is soft and beautiful and in addition the lens is of course also very suitable for low light situations. It is one of the few APS-C prime lenses for Sony that has image stabilization. It is therefore well suited for shooting video handheld even if your camera does not have IBIS. 
The price is also very interesting. Of course, there are a few interesting alternatives to this lens. First of all, the Sigma 30 1.4. With 1.4 it has an even larger maximum aperture for very cinematic shots. Optically it should be at least equivalent to the Sony and I would probably prefer the 30mm to the 35mm as focal length for filmmaking. With this lens you get a lot of value for your money. The only disadvantage I can see is the lack of image stabilization. If you can live without it, this lens is an absolute recommendation to buy. I would also like to mention the Zeiss 24 1.8. With 24mm on APS-C it has a versatile focal length for filmmaking. However, it doesn't have image stabilization. For me this lens was never an option because of its very high price. Finally, I would like to show you my favorite lens, the Sigma 16 1.4. An excellent lens for filmmaking. It is incredibly sharp and has a very low minimum focusing distance. With a maximum aperture of 1.4 you can also take very cinematic shots. In my opinion the focal length of 60mm is ideal for filmmaking, especially when it comes to travel videos. It doesn't have image stabilization, but due to the wide angle you can compensate a lot with a little practice. Despite its larger size, the lens can still be used very well on a smaller gimbal. If you are interested in more details about this lens, have a look at my review. This should give you a good overview of what are probably the best lenses for shooting video on APS-C. If in your opinion I didn't mention one or the other lens, please write it in the comments. With this I would like to say goodbye for today. If the video was interesting for you, give me a like as feedback and see you next time.